Heading out on my favorite kayak trip, I think, in all of Iowa. We're doing the Upper Mississippi National Wildlife Refuge. Victory, Wisconsin is the put-in. Takeout is gonna be Cold Springs Landing. Uh, that's kind of just slightly north of Lynxville. So it should be about a 20 mile trip. Take all day. Um, but man, it's shaping up to be one of the most beautiful days of the whole year. So lots of diversity on this trip. Uh, beautiful bluffs everywhere. Uh, hopefully there won't be too many fishing boats and duck hunters out. Uh, it's early September, but man, it's so nice right now. So some general tips for uh, kayaking the Mississippi. I just stay the heck out of the main channel and just try to hug the shoreline as much as I can. There's tons of boats everywhere and I want to avoid the barges. Um, you get weird hydraulics. There's just like submerged trees and wing dams and just weird weird currents and that's about the only way I can kind of describe this is you'll just be going along and then all of a sudden your boat just kind of starts bouncing a little bit and you get spun around a little bit nothing like white water rapids or scary but definitely like weird if you're used to doing like interior rivers in Iowa uh, but nothing to be scared of but I remember the first few times I paddled out here and went over some submerged wing dams it kind of spins your boat really fast if you're not used to it uh, that's why I always like to take this uh, fishing boat out, Predator, uh, by Old Town, because it's basically a barge. It's like a kayak barge, I guess is what you could call it, but um, super stable. Like, I'm not worried about flipping. The downside is it's slow. I'm averaging about three to five miles per hour, depending on the wind. Um, you got to kind of watch the wind before you come out because if the wind's coming at you up here uh you're not going to be going anywhere and there's been a few trips i've done up here where it took three times as long as i'd estimated just because of the wind and also when you get out of like these sloughs and backwaters and into kind of the main channel even if you're hugging the shore there are huge eddy currents so you might be going downstream but honestly, the eddy currents, you're, you're going into the flow. So that'll slow you down. Um, this particular trip <clears throat> tends to run pretty fast compared to some of the other ones I've done. So I think I should be good. Um, but yeah, man, if that wind is blowing at you and there's an eddy current, you can be paddling as hard as you can and you look over to the side and you're literally not moving. So, uh, so far everything seems nice here. Um, the water level was historically high for, geez, like eight months or something crazy like that. This is the first I've been able to actually like get in up on the Mississippi. Oop, just hit a submerged log there. And now, by the time I finally got up here, it's super, super low. So who knows what I'm gonna encounter. I'm a little worried about going through the slough um, just because if I pick the wrong route through there, I could end up having to walk through a bunch of mud. 
Um, but we'll see what happens. It should be fun no matter what. Uh, just not even paddling though. I feel like I'm going at a pretty good clip. So there's a nice current in here. And once you get kind of off the main drag, it actually becomes kind of peaceful. If you're coming up here to like want peace and quiet and not see anyone else, this probably isn't the place for you. There's trains that come by every 30 seconds it seems and they go fast and they're loud and millions of people boating and fishing and hunting, especially this time of year. Um, but it's, it's worth it to me. I think it's, there's no other, there's no other place like this in Iowa. And yeah, I'm on the Wisconsin side, but I still consider the Mississippi River stretch here part of Iowa. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Last time I was doing this stretch right here, a huge maple tree just fell down probably 10 feet in front of me. If I was 10 feet ahead, it would have pinned me and I probably would be dead. But I can see why, it's just these big old maple trees just with their roots in the sand, anchor them in. But yeah, I remember this spot very, very clearly. turtle right in front of me. I wonder if this is a wing dam spot. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. These are these weird, occasionally you get these weird wing dams like this and it just starts spinning your boat. And you can always kind of see them because the current's just not quite right and the chop looks Kind of funny. This would be a good fishing spot had I brought my fishing stuff. Yep. So you can kind of see that current line right there. Yep, that's another wing dam. So it's just like a dam that comes out or like a rock jetty that comes out to about there. And they use that to direct the flow more towards the main channel. And that's what they used to do to kind of self scour the main channel out uh, to keep the main channel open. But it makes for some weird, weird hydraulics when you go over them in a kayak. Here we go over the wing dam. And it's nothing really weird, but occasionally the current will catch the back of your boat and just start spinning you, especially on the other side of it. There's all these weird eddy currents too that start showing up on the other side of it. Here we go. 
So this is where the water starts coming back up as it's swirling over it. You can see the water coming up here. Starting to get the back of my boat kicked around a little bit. Here's another upwelling right here that'll spin you. So I'm here kind of at the halfway point. Um, not quite halfway, I guess, but pretty darn close. I'm not sure where we're at exactly, but there's a boat, a boat ramp, and then this bridge connects all the way over to Lansing, I know. Um, 
But what, what's coming up is the slough, and the slough kind of gets a little maze-like, at least it was the last time I was here. Um, but the water was a couple feet higher last time I was here, so I'm getting a little nervous like I might get trapped, or at least lost for a little bit in the maze. So hopefully the main channel is visible and easy to kind of see which way the water's flowing through, all the, the reeds and the lily pads and stuff like that. But just taking a quick lunch break and then I'm gonna hit it back up. All right, <clears throat> here we go on to section two of three. Man, it's nice out. The wind on my back is for sure helping, I can tell. has a totally different feel. The first section was kind of like a small river type section and this one just completely different. It's wide open, there's just muddy grassy banks, uh, not as many trees, it's just really chill and slow flowing. Some big fish jumping in here. I think they're just carp buffalo type stuff but still they're huge so now I have some choices we got five different paths to take one two three four five man those bluffs are awesome Mad Heron. So the current's still going at a good chop here. And I'm just gonna try to let it take me. And it looks like it wants me to go down this way. Mm, yeah, it's pushing me in here. Although, <laughs> that way doesn't look too promising. I'm definitely getting pushed in this direction. Well, here we go, I guess. Current seems fairly strong. It's definitely not the wind pushing me. There's definitely good water flow going through here, so I guess I'm just gonna go with it. Here we go. stretch on this whole trip so far. We're far enough away from the railroad tracks that it's just like a kind of a rumble off in the distance when trains go by. You can't really hear cars, you can hear birds. 
birds chirping. I can hear the wind in through the trees. I can hear bugs. This is a good stretch. Although what freaks me out is whenever it looks like I dead end, like straight ahead. That current's still just chugging right along here though. I think we're good. I think this is a this is definitely a different path I took through here than the first time. The water is definitely muddy, but it's surprisingly clear. I can see my white paddle about two and a half, three feet down. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's definitely like tinted brown, but it's surprisingly clear. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Look at that open up. opens up with a beautiful view of a power plant. I think I'm the only one out here. There was one fishing boat with a couple guys in it right as I entered in this area, but now I haven't seen anyone out here. But what's kind of neat, you can see how maze-like this is. There's option there, that's where we came from. More water flowing in from there. There's some water flowing in from there. So one, two, three, four things all kind of converging right here. And up ahead, we've got option one, option two, option three. I think probably the, well, I don't know. Either one could be good. And of course we got our nice power plant. All right, better get back to making good time. I've been floating too long. If you're not sure which direction the water's flowing, Check the direction the aquatic plants are bent. They'll point you in the right direction. I think this is where the horse commits suicide in the never-ending story. Could be wrong though, but I'm pretty sure. water.
<clears throat> as you can see, it's not very deep here at all. There's old stumps littering it everywhere. I think it gets even more shallow as we get further out into the... Oh yeah, I can see the weeds coming up. I hope this is just a giant floating mat of duckweed. Uh, this is only two feet deep here. hard to feel like you're making any progress. You just sit here and paddle and paddle and paddle. And when you're out in the middle of the big old Mississippi like this with those huge bluffs miles out in the distance, feels like you're not even moving. Right now I'm heading towards that dinky little town over there. I think that's Ferryville. And then the next dinky town down is Lynxville. And somewhere in between there is the Cold Springs Landing. And that is hopefully where I am getting out. been paddling here for like an hour and a half and it feels like I haven't moved at all. But the water is crystal clear here which is really weird and really cool. And there's just like the seagrass bed. It's like a giant underwater prairie. It's pretty dang cool. Yeah. 